Hi, Quinn. I'm Peggy Lumpkin, and I have known your grandparents since long before your mom was even born, but we haven't seen you in a while. So this is my husband, Dale. Hi, Quinn. He is 73 and certainly old enough to be an elder study project, as am I. But this is his mom, Chloe Lumpkin. She, Hi, Quinn. She's 104 and a half and she's gonna give you the answers that you sent for your project. So, oh, I already said how old you are. <laughs> so you don't have to say that. And uh, you were born on May 19th? 12. 1912, right after the Titanic sank, I think. Was it? Uh, on the same day, I think. Okay, where did you grow up? In the Methow Valley. A tiny little town? Um, we lived out three miles from the tiny little town. Of Winthrop? Or, of Winthrop. Washington. Is that kind of near Canada? Um, oh, probably 150 miles. So that's pretty close. Okay. Quinn wants to know what kind of things you did for fun when you were a kid. Um, I don't really, we played in the dirt. <laughs> you swam in a creek, I think. I saw pictures of you. Uh, we did have a, a creek in the summer we could play in. Um, I remember I was always drawing pictures of cities in the mud. With your finger or toe in the mud? Yeah, with my fingers and toes. And then clean up in the creek. So, um, tell Quinn about your brothers and sisters. I had two, two brothers and three sisters, and I was the third one. And you're the only one still with us today. Yes, I'm the only one left now. One uh, sister almost made 100 and one made 99. Yes, she passed away in May. And it's still very <laughs> sore this Christmas to think of her that she isn't here. Okay. Next, on a more fun subject, what sort of toys did you have besides the mud? <laughs> uh, any toy that some elderly person made for us. Carving out of wood? Out of wood, yes. Did you have dolls? We had dolls, yeah. Uh, that was our main Christmas, was a doll and the boys. I don't remember what the boys got. And a, a gun. A, not a real gun. Toy oh, gun. Toy gun. And what were your favorite foods when you were a kid? Favorite what? Foods. Um, she got an orange on Christmas. Uh, we uh, we had no favorites. I don't think you ate what we had, and that was it. We we had a garden, vegetables, and my father always killed a pig and a. Calf or cow for meat. And 
that was about it you didn't have a choice you had to ate what we had and, that, and you couldn't whine around about <laughs> this or that you went to a one-room schoolhouse can you tell Quinn about that well in the beginning it was one room, about 12 students in hard um, wooden seats and just a desk of, uh, there were no desks, it was just a shelf for you. Did you Did, have ink wells? Uh, um, that was much later. So you wrote with a pencil or did you have a, a chalk uh, slate board? We had a chalk board, but we had paper because we used to do a lot of exercises for her to be able to write. And that's the one thing all through my years that I ever got an A in. It was real fancy writing then. Both of my aunts were teachers and they wrote beautiful script type writing beautiful so your schoolroom didn't have a bathroom inside did it no we did not have bathrooms uh, running water if you went need to go to the bathroom you went outside and the tissue then was so either the wall um Sears, Sears Roebuck or Montgomery Ward catalog very stiff and cold <laughs> Okay, you'll hear Dale cooking dinner for us in the background. We're getting hungry. Okay, what were your teachers like? Uh, usually on the old side. <laughs> Not as old as I am, but maybe in their 40s or 50s. And Oftentimes, they were men who were much older. And do you want to tell Quinn about how you got to school? We, in the winter time, the snow would be above the fence posts, which was, were about four foot high. We had a horse and a sleigh, and that's uh, our horse was a red and white spotted pony, and the poor thing would post the school <laughs> in this sleigh, and it was very cold, and. We didn't think anything about it. Then we did not have the warm clothing you have. We had what we called drawers, <laughs> which were cotton underwear. But it was warm. And when, when was it that you got a car in the family? Oh, till I was probably a teenager. We didn't even know about cars. 
back up where we were. We were um, a long a time, a place from where uh, they even had a road that a car could go on. We only had, when we did get a car, we only had one um, a rough road, not paved or anything, just dirt road with rocks and everything and still in it. And I think you told me once that you didn't have a driver's license because they hadn't started driver's licenses yet. No, um, they hadn't. And so uh, when my older sister got a, star, a car, um, a car, I started driving, just got in and shift the gears and, and knew how to put on the brake and that was about it. <laughs> but that's the way we drove. I remember when uh, it was well slick and icy, I would skid all around. <laughs> Thought nothing of it. Did you get a recess, a break? Uh, we got a short break. Usually that was running around to sort of keep warm, play tag, or visit with a, a friend that we hadn't seen for a while. Do you think it would be different to be an elementary student now? It would be very, very different. The only computers you had were in your head. What? <laughs> you didn't have computers back then. We didn't have computers. We didn't have uh, any kind of uh, of equipment like you have today. I remember our first movie was a carbon uh, lantern that we turned on and watched uh, some of those old Jeff and Mutt and that Mutt type and Jeff. of. Was it, it's one of those that you turned yeah, I I really don't remember. Um, I think a grown up had to set it up like a movie. Chloe was a teacher until eighty years old. She was substituting till eighty, and she was a librarian in grade schools in Washington. Okay. Um, Quinn wants to know what it was like during World War I. You were pretty young. I was young. I remember um, mother's brothers going off to war. Uh, then we did without sugar or any of the finer foods. You could not buy sugar. We saved every bit of foil and string and things like that. What we ever, uh, what they ever used the foil and string for, I don't know. But you didn't dare not keep any of that if you happen to have it. It's a hard habit to break. Okay, what about World War II? You were in Texas, and that's where uh, yeah. Dale was born in 1943. Uh, um, 
uh, Texas was a big surprise to everyone. Um, the men, the young men, were sent off to to war, and the women started taking over the jobs. Many of them. Um, uh, did men's, ordinarily men's jobs. Uh, we all tried to do things to help. I think you told me that September 11th was worse in a way than World War II because World War II and World War I were over there. They weren't in our country. That's right. Uh, do you know that when this country started, that those young men that set up the government then were only 30 years old? And Uh, many were English, Ireland, Irish. I know my family was first, our name was Howard and we were kicked out of England or Ireland because of our religion and we took the name of Hancock when we came over here and there are many many memorials and whatnot at Gettysburg, Massachusetts, of the Hancock uh, men. Were you any relationship to John Hancock? Besides, you had a brother with that name. I had a, a grandfather, great-grandfather, and so forth, named John Hancock. In fact, my brother was teaching and made a big order to a company, and it didn't come and didn't come, and finally he called. He said, well, you didn't ever sign there's a bill for it. You just wrote John Hancock. And he had a hard time in convincing him, them that his name was John Hancock. Quinn, an old expression used to be, put your John Hancock here, which yeah. means sign it, because John Hancock, isn't he the one that was an original signer of the Constitution or Declaration of Independence, and he wrote it big so King George in England could read it. Yes, <laughs> that's it. That's right. Okay, well, Chloe, um, you have a motto that you live your life by that you might want to share with Quinn. It's ten words, just two letters each. Do you want to tell him what it is? Yes, Quinn, remember this. If it is to be, it's up to me. Thank you, Chloe. Good luck, Quinn, on your project. We'll be glad to hear about it. Glad to talk to you.